Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of the songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. Again, thank you for joining our pod. If you're listening on the day that it publishes, happy May Day. It's May the 1st. And we're glad that you made time to, to join us. We've got a very special guest. I've been wanting to meet him for a, a long, long time. I've always known who she is. Let me tell you about Christy Manna, who is our guest today. His page is here. Let me tell you. I'm going to try to sum it all up really quickly, and then we'll go in depth as we go. Uh, she had this, this song that was like a, a six, not like it was, six weeks at the top of the charts and launched the career of this guy who I think if he keeps going, he's going to be a big star. <laughs> Blake, Blake Shelton. I think he will. I remember when it was Mullet, Mullet Blake. Yeah. He used to come and hang around the radio station, bring his guitar. Just a great guy. Actually, I got to jam with him one time. It's a long story. Let's hear That's it. cool. But anyway, she wrote Austin, the song that launched him. I wrote it with somebody else, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Co, right? Um, she's also had uh, hits from Big and Rich. Tiffany? Really? Are you kidding? <laughs> Her songs have been heard on CMT, ESPN, The Kelly Clarkson Show, Gail King's Grammy Special, and others too. She's also a keynote speaker, a concert performer, a workshop facilitator. Uh, she's got an online course that's very popular called Spark Your Creativity. I hope you're going to spark our creativity today. <laughs> I hope I do. Also a podcast, Kirsty Cast, which is really amazing. We'll be talking about that. And she's the founder of Songwriter Girl and Songwriter Girl Camps, empowering women in the music industry. This goes on and on. She's a label executive, <laughs> uh, her own publisher, a career coach, a mentor, life coach. I need you today. A cat lover. A cat lover? <laughs> that I didn't know about you, but I'm impressed. That impresses me. Christy, there's not hours in the day for you. Oh, how, do you how do you make it all work? I don't know. You know I don't know. I, I'm, a play, I'm a plate spinner. <laughs> You're a plate spinner. <laughs> That's quite the trick. And you brought your husband, Bill, Bill Warner, who's... Uh, uh, you, you teamed up uh, when you first came to town, you were telling me. Yes. And wrote lots of songs. Bill, you're not a producer, and tell, yes. us, tell us a little bit about what you do real, real quick. Because I want to introduce you, too. Well, uh, yes, I, I work for Lucky Sky Music. I uh, I, pr- I produce the uh, flagship artist, Tori Martin. Tori Martin. On, on the label. And uh, I do work with Kirsty on quite a, a number of projects. <laughs> I watch those plates spin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's great. It's great to have a partner that supports everything yes, you do, isn't it? It's so true. Yeah, it's so true. And you work with our friend Bill DeLuigi. Oh, Bill's been on this show, and I love Bill. My song brother. He's your song brother. Yes. So you must have written a lot of songs. We him. have. We we've been really fortunate to have a lot of cuts together. We have. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just had something come out recently uh, on an Australian artist named Lily Grace, and um, we we've I had. Know of Lily Grace? Yeah, she's, she's amazing. She's young a, talent, huh? She's she's a real up and comer. Yeah. And uh, we've had we've had a lot of cuts together in Australia, a lot of number ones. It's it's really Good. cool, and you know it's so cool when you get in a room with somebody, you meet a, a co writer, and it just develops into this creative relationship. It's kind mm-hmm. of hard to explain, but you know you've had them with people too, yeah. and it develops in this cre- creative relationship that is just so wonderful. The way you can read each other's minds mm-hmm. in the room, and you know mm-hmm. the way you can let each other roll when. Uh, you know, when somebody's really, you know, got something going on in their mind that they got to get out. So he and I really connect. And, you know, he's from Philly. I'm from Ohio. We're both from the north, so to speak. And there's something to that, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they used to talk about in Muscle Shoals, you know, something in the water. Something in the water. There, and yeah. I think that that is kind of true in the sense that people come from the same kind of place and they mm-hmm. they understand how each other ticks. Don't well, forget the Italian part, too. And the Italian they part. They call each other WAP. Ah. <laughs> I know that's like... Which is a pejorative term yeah, for I, Italians. I know that's but. not like politically... She picks up the phone, hey, WAP. I know it's, I know it's not politically or... Um, <laughs> now, I was thinking De Luigi was Ita- Irish. <laughs> no, right. I'm just kidding. I, I'm, with the name like Lenahan, you know I'm Irish, but uh, yeah. I, I'm half Italian, too. Are you? Yeah, so that's why you're so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, you better You've got both things going. Yeah. The fun, the two fun nationalities. Well, the Irish is kind of like a Italian removed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they started out as uh, Romans, I think. I'm sure my dad is spinning in his grave, though, knowing that I'm coming, calling somebody else WAP because he never liked any of those kind of terms, you know. Oh, absolutely <laughs> no, not. Not no where way. I came from either. No, no way. Absolutely not. Yeah. And but, you're from Ohio, too. I'm from Ohio, too. Grew up in Cleveland, born in Buffalo, New York. Uh, oh. My first radio gig was uh, near Youngstown in, in Moore, Ohio. Yeah, you so. said that. That's cool. Yeah, and um, 
Wasn't Bob DePiro too from the Yeah, he's from Youngstown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great song. Right? I think he went uh, to Boardman High School or Bill went no, he went to he went to Liberty High School. Oh, now Liberty. we're talking about yes. high schools. But he I, I used to watch his uh, high school rock band or um, I I had a high school rock band. He, Bob's a little older. Uh-huh. Uh yeah, but I'd watch his band. He was in a band called Joy. Joy. And they would play uh you know, the high school dances and stuff. I remember some of those. Was, wasn't Glass Harp from Young Young? Yes. Well? Yeah. Phil Keggy. Yeah. My dad yeah. had a recording studio, and Phil first recorded there when Phil was like fifteen. He was in a group called the New Hudson Exit mm. before Glass Harp. Yeah. And he was amazing even then. Oh. Yeah. If you don't know who Phil Keggy is, please. Yeah. Look him up. What? He's one of the best guitar players in the world. He yes. is. Right he up. is. Yeah. One time we played a, a round. I don't know how we were in this round with him, Bill with the Bluebird. Remember? Because of Sarah Turner. Oh, that's right. Another Youngstowner. Mm-hmm. And he just uh, was killing it, and everybody's just like, mm, you know, mm. we're yeah. gonna run with Phil Keggy. I'm, wow. You know, wow. I'm a pretty good guitar player, but I'm not Phil Keggy. He, he's right next to me. I'm yeah. having like an out of Bluebird experience. <laughs> I would have too. <laughs> My friend Eve Sellers, who uh, was on this show uh, back in the middle of of April, talking about her new album. Her and and, and, and Phil are pretty good friends. Mm -hmm. And the guitar she plays, Phil gave her. Okay. And so oh. whenever I say, I go, can I, can I carry in the Phil Keggy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to touch the guitar case and touch the guitar. So, yeah, he's absolutely incredible. I was in a, a little uh, restaurant in Destin, Florida. We go there every year uh, called the Donut Hall. It's our favorite place. And I had my, I just bought a new guitar, a Zager guitar. And I had my Zager shirt on that they gave me. And this lady kept staring at me the whole time. And I'm checking out and she comes up to me and she grabs my hand and she looks at me and I go, what, what? <laughs> she goes, I'm sorry. Are you Phil Keggy? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, that's no. a compliment. No, there's a slight resemblance. I can, I can see why she did that. I can see I'm that. Like, no, yeah. but if I could play half as good as I'd be twice as good as I am right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, they asked uh, on the Dick Cavett show back in the day. They asked Jimmy who was his favorite guitar player. Who were the best? Who was the best guitar player? I heard this. He and said this Phil awesome. Keggy. Yeah. 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 So I have to ask. Uh, he, they ask him. Uh, uh, what's it like to be the best guitar player in the world? He's not even going to ask Phil, Phil Keggy. That's how it goes. Yeah. Isn't that wow, something? Wow, yeah. that's amazing. That is some pretty high praise. Yeah. <laughs> you know, absolutely. Well, Chrissy, let's talk about you. Now, when did you move to, uh, did you go right from Youngstown to, to Nashville? Or? No, no. Uh, Bill and I met in college. You did? And uh, I actually was going to marry somebody else, called my wedding off, and then Bill and I got married like a year Whoa. later. It's true. People don't and you're going to hunt him down, aren't you? No. <laughs> no. Right, no kidding. I, but we, we I met, won. So. <laughs> you won. Yeah, right. We, we met in college, and we met, you know, in, in theory. Bill was really good at theory. He's amazing at theory, and I was always pretty bad and still not yeah, the most too. amazing person. But at any rate, yeah. so uh, we moved to California, and my mom always said we should go to Nashville, and so we came back to Youngstown, and mm-hmm. we had a, a duo. It started out as a jazz duo, and then nice. it evolved into, you know, playing commercial music. And so we toured around, and then eventually we came here to Nashville. Mm-hmm. And when we got here, uh, we we got a gig at the Opryland Hotel nice. uh, because uh, somebody who worked there had gotten kicked in the leg by their horse, mm-hmm. and so they couldn't play, unfortunately. And we got a job there. We worked at where the Jack Daniels was in a different place now. We worked there. We worked at the Pick and Parlor. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, we got a writing deal together as a team. And so we started writing together. And oh, then Bill mm-hmm. kind of faded away from the writing part of the world. I had a chance to work at uh, Starstruck before it was, it's not, it was not a, six, yeah, 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 it was uh, by Mrs. Grissom's Salads over by the soccer stadium. Okay. I think that's gone now. Is it? is it gone now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, it, it, Star, Starstruck was originally in a different location. Mm-hmm. So I worked in the publishing uh office uh, engineering there i'd never engineered in my life mm. but i grew up around it with my dad's studio uh so uh i was only there for about six months and i parlayed that into some full-time stuff so there was no time to write engineering is extremely uh time consuming you're the first one to the session and the last one to leave and... yeah that you are yeah and i don't know about you but I, I the reason why i don't have my own studio is i know i'd spend like all my time and then some and i probably wouldn't get any sleep because it's addictive and you just and tedious and you've got to have that ear for it too <laughs> uh, a famous engineer uh, dave pensato says you're never done with the mix you just ran out of time or money yeah <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> i that believe is, that that is true that is really true so let's talk about how your songwriting career really began and took off and tell us this story well uh 
You know, I really I think it's important when you're going to be a songwriter. You know, everybody talks about, you know, what, you know, you can't make any money in the music business. And I get really mm. tired of hearing We've heard that, those yeah. stories. And but there so, are ways. Uh, I, and we're going to do a whole show on that, too. Coming up. Yeah, I, I guess we could agree on that in some ways. But at any rate, we came here and we started writing as a team. And then then I just kept on writing. And, you know, I always tell people you have to have a plan. And so Bill was making the money and mm-hmm. I was keeping my nose down writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And you have to do a lot of writing to get great. It's like golfing, you know, you, you have to be in it. Yeah, you do. So um, so then I went on the road with uh, an artist named Joylyn White. She was signed to Columbia. We went on the road. I remember her. Yeah, and I sang back up and played keys for her. I want to say she was Ohio too. No, was she, she was no? from Indiana. Indiana, okay. Yeah, close. Nearby. Cincinnati close. area. Yeah, she okay. was like from, I don't know where. Yeah. I can't okay. remember right now. But anyway... So I went on the road with her, got off the road and, and, you know, kept writing even more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And, and then, Then? um, just so happened that David Kent and I uh, heard this idea from Ash Underwood's answering machine. I have always heard this from way back when this song was It's really true. It was on his answering machine. It was on his answering machine. And I went to his house and said, we should write that. He goes, no, I don't. We're what talking we? about Austin right now. We're he, talking about the song Austin. Yeah. Actually, on his machine, he said, oh. "If this is Austin, I still love you." Because his love you. his girlfriend had moved back to Austin, and he left that message for her. And so many people have asked me that: Is that Austin the city? Is the girl named Austin? Who's Austin? Yeah. And it's really he was going, "Hey, Austin, you know, like, like I would see yeah. you, hey, Cincinnati, hey, that yeah. kind of thing." Hey, Youngstown. Right. <laughs> so exactly. So he he didn't want to write it. I said, "Okay." Uh, he said, I don't want to write it. You can have the idea. So I went to David Kent's house like the next day Unbelievable. and told him. And David said, he doesn't want it. No. So David and I wrote, we, we talked for many hours, maybe five hours about the idea and talked about how we would progress this that. story and all these kind of things, what it could be. And I think we had like three writing sessions on that song. I you know, it know. wasn't, you know, like now people get together and it's like, oh my gosh, if we don't write this in two hours, we're going to kill ourselves, you know? Yeah. And it was just kind of different then. Mm. And then I remember, you know, you always remember where you were. I remember I was coming out of a restaurant in, in February, a February night up in uh, Goodlesville. And David Kent said, I, I made a demo of, uh, of, if this is Austin, I still love you, which was the official title, it right? Was a much longer title then. Yeah. And he said, I really think we have something. Mm. And so I could not believe it. I thought it was so great. And so... At the time, David was writing for Talbot Music, and Janet Talbot was his publisher. So I'm fast-forwarding here, and she pitched it to uh, Debbie Zavitson, who... I uh, love at, Debbie. At that she time, was so a cool. giant. Yeah. 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 And uh, Clay Walker put the song on hold. Really? And then it somehow... Could have been a Clay Walker cut. You and missed s- out. And, s- and then <laughs> somehow, um, you know, she started working with Blake. She her I think Bobby... Uh, brought her Blake and and yeah. she started working with him. She really fought for you know Blake to be on the label and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, then when Clay took it off hold, I remember I was in California and David Kent called. Hey, this guy named Blake Shelton <laughs> wants to cut. If this is Austin, I still love you. What do you think? I said, Well, he's a really good singer. Yeah, it, it would be a really good cut. Yeah, that was my attitude. He goes, Okay, so. We said, yeah, go ahead, cut it, you know. Oh well, then after the song was cut and, you know, it was up and down and over and out and mm-hmm. uh, the song was in, it was out, it was a single, it wasn't. And Bobby Braddock was such a fan of the song mm-hmm. and he started calling people and saying and playing it. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And he got, you know, like 100% of people were saying, oh my gosh, you know, he's got to do this song. So, um, so anyway, so then Blake... Uh, of course, Giant closes and Warner Brothers, yeah. you know, picked Blake up. Mm-hmm. And I'm skipping over some of the, Th- okay. the, the sort of details. But at any rate, Bobby said, I-, I see this song. I see one word going up the charts. I think you should call it Austin. And that's mm. where that, you know, abbreviation happened was Bobby's suggestion. Well, Bobby's pretty brilliant. I'd say. Yeah. D- D-I-V-O-R-C-E. And he stopped loving her. Today. Right. He's got an amazing book, My Life on the Row, which I was, oh, was one yeah. of my all-time favorite books. Yeah. Lo- I've met him once or twice, yeah. actually. I'd love to have him on this podcast. Yeah. Actually. He's he's it. got so many stories to tell, and he's really a brilliant, brilliant writer, and yeah. he's such a nice person. The, the one guy. detail you're leaving, nice you're leaving out is Giant released the record, just preliminary, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, 
already people were calling up going, no, it's Austin, the girl, or the Yeah, yeah. So I Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, determined that uh, yeah. well, if they care enough to ask, <laughs> the song has legs. Oh, yeah. you yeah. betcha. So you bet you. Warner yeah. Brothers picked him up, and uh, that, I think one other cool. act on, on Giant went to Warner Brothers. I don't know who that was, but... Here's the question I've been wanting to ask you. <clears throat> so the guy who How do you know been... I'm going to answer it? No, okay. <laughs> and you don't have to. <laughs> The guy who had it on his answering machine. Yeah. What did he say after it became a big hit? <laughs> he said. What was his reaction? He said, I didn't even get dinner. No. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said. He catered the, uh, my number one, one number one party. I didn't even get a dinner. He didn't no. even get a dinner. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, dude. We gave you a chance to write it. And you said no. But he always would say, you know, it would have been a different song. And that's the, yeah. that's the whole thing, you know, right. about any song you write with anybody mm-hmm. it, it just depends on the day on the divine on the moment on the day the, the divine idea. the moment well it's a... it depends on all of those all of those kinds of things come into play in the room you know because i really believe in all the gifts were given ideas and everything they're all god given and so um you know how do we use them yeah and and i just sure always is. think it's this is just one of my philosophies of life i just think it's so sad for people that have great minds and they use their ideas in bad ways because you know there's so many great ways to use ideas there's all kinds of ways to affect people and and lift people up whatever you want to call it and so that's one of my bits of advice to songwriters is that you just have to go in the room and you have to be open you have to always be ready for what's going to come down the pike you can't compete with who's in the room you can't try to get your word your line your melody whatever it is because there's going to be a day that you're in a room and you've got it all. And mm-hmm. it's just... You're driving. Like, it's just yeah. coming like mm-hmm. a waterfall. And not every day is like that. No, sometimes you're not. Maybe you're, yeah. You know, but maybe. another piece of advice Bobby Braddock gave me, and I use it to this day. He said, you know, you're going to write with a lot of people. But his experience was, you know, you find these people that you just really make the magic with. And you... It's so true. And you, and you stick with those people. Hang on to that. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a hard thing when people say, hey, you want to write? And... and and I think about every time somebody asks me that and I think, you know, like I, I, I've got my, I've got my loved ones in my heart, you know, yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying I don't want to try with you, but, right. but for me, you know, there has to be a purpose in a sense because we're trying to write commercial music. We're not yes, just yeah. writing for fun. And, and so, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes that can be a hard thing to say to somebody, you know what, I'm not taking any You're new right. appointments right now, or I'm just being real. Yeah, um, yeah, and I know a lot of people to. don't talk about that, but I am it's into being real. You talk about making those connections, and yes. when you're in a room co-writing, I imagine it's 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 you're throwing your heart out on the table. Oh yeah, and and so it's I can imagine you getting really close, and then you, yeah, and it doesn't always happen like you say. There's a lot of times that we call it co-staring. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. It's just not working, and you know it. Uh, and then you don't set up uh, right the next time, or you maybe start something and you don't get it finished. But. Well, I always try to give people a couple of tries, you know, because yeah, me too. everybody has, you know, a bad day or, yeah. you know, something just happened in their life and then they mm-hmm. got to show up and get creative and, right. and then all the weirdness that happened with COVID. And I think that, yeah. Oh, yeah. that made it a little weird when people started getting back together, you know, cause everybody got really comfortable whether anybody wants to admit it or not, mm-hmm. even though zoom was a pain in the rear end, yeah. everybody got comfortable with it. Sure did. I doing still it. do a lot of right. Yeah, that, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, if it works for you, do it. And you learn uh, that it's a smaller world today. I write with artists from Australia. Yeah. And artists from Colorado and South Dakota and yeah. you know, Texas. And, and, you know, thank God for Zoom, you know. It's but true. I still think there's something cool about being in the room. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like the magic of the right. human being connection, you know. Well, let's get back to Austin because I'll tell you, um, to me... Um, it, I don't think there's any such thing as a perfect song, but doggone it, this is so close. Every <laughs> line crafted, oh, every sweet. the way that every verse leads to the chorus and and the ending, it was just an amazing right. And I could see that it probably I knew it wasn't one of those songs that you wrote in five minutes. No, well, we we really did talk about it, you know. And David Kent and I don't really write together that much anymore, but um, that is something that we would always do we would always discuss. Mm-hmm. And David lived kind of out in the country and he's a gourmet cook. Mm. And, he, and he'd say, if you come all the way out here, I'll make us a good lunch. And so, okay, Ooh. I'm Italian. Of course, I'm going to, food will lead me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so I always would go out there and uh-huh. work with him, you know, and that's another thing too, is being in that space. It's a good vibe. And 
I'm, I'm a window girl. I like to have a room that's got light and windows and I don't, I, and I can always feel it in myself. Like if I go to a right and it's in a room with no windows, I can feel my clothes down, you know, yeah. it really happens yeah. for me, you know, I cause agree. I know myself yeah. really well and, and it's what I need, you know? Yeah. Well, listen, can we play that song? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 this, I, this is funny. I got to tell you, yeah. I don't have my piano. Uh-huh. And so I, I'm, I'm, I might just like fake, okay. yeah. fake play on your table here. <laughs> fake play and on my Bill, table. And Bill's going to Bill's going to play, play the guitar. That's awesome. Here we go. Mercy Manna. Thank you. She left without leaving a number. Said she needed to clear her mind. He figured she'd gone back to Austin Cause she talked about it all the time It was almost a year Before she called him up Three rings and an answering machine Is what she got If you're calling about the car I sort it If this is Tuesday night I'm bowling if you've got something to sell, you're wasting your time. I'm not fine. If it's anybody else, wait for the tone. You know what to do. And P.S. If this is Austin, I still love you. Telephone fell to the counter She heard but she couldn't believe What kind of man would hang on that long What kind of love that must be She waited three days And then she tried again Didn't know what she'd say she heard three rings and then If it's Friday night I'm at the ball game And first thing Saturday If it don't rain I'm heading up to the lake And I'll be gone All weekend long But I'll call you back When I get home yeah, On Sunday afternoon And P.S. Is Austin, I still love you. This time she left a number, but not another word. And she waited by the phone on Sunday evening, and this is what he heard. If you're calling about my heart. It's still yours Should listen to it a little more Then it wouldn't have taken me So long to know where I belong and By the way, boy This is no machine you're talking to Can't you tell This is Austin And I I still love you. I still love you. Beautiful. I've said it a million times, and I'm going to say it a million and one. My favorite thing is hearing this song by the person who wrote it. Oh, oh thank you. That is fantastic. Thank you so Great much. Show. Thanks for asking us. We are into um, songwriting here. So yeah. I like to dissect songs. And yeah. one of the things I've always noticed and loved about this song, when you get to the ending of that song, yeah. where it's her calling him, yeah, um, you change key. You modulate. Yeah. Was that pre-thought? Did, 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 how did that? How did that? Come yeah, out? we modulated in the in the uh, original 
recording, the re- you know, kind of like the big lift, like the, ah, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. And modulations, you know, I think they're really effective, but, you know, too. that's depending a little old school, I guess. And, yeah, depending yeah. on the song, but yeah. I don't know if they're so big anymore. You know, they were big in Christian music. I mean, they might still be. I don't know. You, but You rarely hear a half step modulation. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. always a whole step these yeah. yeah. days. Yeah. 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 So. Is that a half or a whole? I mean, that's a whole. That was a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you're absolutely right. And you were writing with Jay Ford today, who's one of my f- favorite friends. But I call him Joe Pan. Yeah, he <laughs> he is a talented a kid. And well, we, wrote, we wrote a song with Jan Buckingham, um, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was an okay song. And then one night he came out and played it uh, at a writer's run we were doing. And uh-huh. he goes, I got an idea on this song. I'm going to modulate the last uh, uh, yeah. chorus. And I went, okay, let's hear it. And when he did, I went, Dude, that's it. That made the song. Well, and he and he's got the you know the kind of voice, and he has oh. a great command of his instrument, you know, yeah. his vocal. For more on and him, and so he can, so he yeah. can really sing, and so if he hears it, he can go. J. Four uh, we, we did a, a, a podcast with him, and it's it's you'll find it if you go to the archives. Yeah, so, I'll have to listen to it. Yeah, I think he's guy. super talented. Kid. He, he really is. I, I call everybody a kid. If you're like under fifty, you're a kid. I, to me. I do the same way. <laughs> I do the same thing. So I remember when when Austin hit the airwaves. I was working in Cincinnati. And I just knew it was going to be a giant hit. And oh, I, I thank you. Telling Blake that too, and and he was such a cool guy. He would just, and I think he worked it just right. You know, he would come. Cincinnati was right up, you know, the turnpike, right up the throughway. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so he on his way, he would stop in and just hang around yeah. and talk with us, us jocks, and I, so, and we became just good fans and friends. And, yeah. And it's good to have the radio people behind you like yes. that. But he was just really cool, and and that song um, still sticks in my head. Um, well, it's just absolutely you. incredible. Yeah. And well, and, what I you know what makes me feel really good about the song, I just got to mm-hmm. say is, I remember one time it was CMA Fest, yeah. and uh, I was at lunch with uh, my friend Lynn Wilbanks and Bill D. Billy D. And somebody, you know, the waiter comes up and somebody said, "Oh, she, you know, Rod Austin and." The kid, you know, was like 20 and they were going on and on about how much they loved the song. And and I just love when people tell me how much the song moves them because that's we were talking about that today in our right. I just think it's so important as a writer to create things, you know, that really make you feel, you know, we, we often mm-hmm. write through things that maybe aren't going to be the big hit or whatever. Uh, and they get discounted, of course, and they languish away somewhere in a drawer or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I but I, I know I hate that too. But um, you know, the song really made us feel something as we were creating it, and and it was I so just I just loves it, love that it makes people feel, you know, so well crafted. Thank you. That is so well crafted. Absolutely. Let's take a little break. We're come back because there's some things I forgot to mention about you, your oh. actress, oh. and I want to talk more about. Uh, your girl camps, showgirl camps, and things like that. So don't go away. This is Songwriter Connection. You're listening to the Songwriter Connection, connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. Kirsty Mann is our guest. Bill Warner's with her uh, her husband, and it's so good to have you guys here. So good. I'm glad you came, Bill. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. He it's just drove me here. <laughs> he he Otherwise, gonna... she'd be playing air piano, and that, you couldn't hear that over yeah, there. I was on my knee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also see you do voiceovers, and you're an actress. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't, I don't, fact, act, I don't act so much anymore. But I do act. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, that she act. acts up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a trivia question, folks. Mm. Another great Blake Shelton song is Old Red. Mm. And I looked at your IMDb uh, profile and it said start in Old Red. And I'm like, Old Red? Wait a minute. Was there a movie? Was there a song? So I pulled up the video and I hadn't seen it in a while. Now, Bobby Braddock is in that film. Yeah, video. yeah. He's the... Uh, if, 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 do yourself a favor. Find the video and you'll find... I'm not going to say. Yeah, don't say what I do. See, see you'll find it. Don't say you'll what I do. Yeah. I will tell you that Bobby is the, the creepy guy in the jail cell when he's <laughs> yeah. going to jail. Yeah. Well, that was funny because at the time, you know, I was really into acting and my agent sent me on this. Uh, I said, oh, you got to send me on that. So I, I remember when I went to the audition, like, uh, I did my hair real. I, lo- I didn't look anything like myself. No. And uh, and uh, Blake said, "That's Kirsty Mana. She's got to be in. <laughs> She's got to be in it." You know? I love it. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. But I love that song, Old Red. That oh. that is such a great idea for a song. I remember when the program director played it for me first. Said, "What do you think? What do you think?" I'm going, "Think." And you know, and you think about and like you it. and you think about the way Old Red sounds, and you think yeah. about God's country, right? Oh yeah. And so like that was a the kind of a vibe, you know, that right. Blake. Was was even into then 
Yeah, because it's it, it's a little similar, I think. You know, in the sense of the feel, mm-hmm. yeah. not of the not of the song, of course. But now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, uh, we were chat, chatting, uh, texting. Uh, a few weeks back, you told me you just got back from a cruise. Yeah. You do this little thing where you're Carol King, right? Yes. Well, here's what happened uh, about, I don't know, help me, Bill, six, seven years ago, something like that. This uh-huh. friend of mine, Jonathan Birchfoot, he lives in Hickory, North Carolina, and he called up and said, look, I got this idea for this show, and you're the only person I know that would do it or could do it. And I said, what? And he said, well, I think we should do a show uh, like a live from the Troubadour thing of James Taylor and Carol King. So cool. I said, oh, this is fun. Yeah. So we put this idea together and, and uh, you know, like a lot of the same music that was on that show. Yeah. And um, we sent we, we sent it out to our friend in Las Vegas and, and said, what do you think of this idea? He goes, I really love it. I want to write some scores. So he wrote scores for it, wow. and orchestral scores, and then we got a grant and we hired an orchestra and we shot a demo reel uh, with this grant money. And then we started touring with a show called You've Got a Friend, which was the music of those two artists. And then COVID came. Oh, was it just... And, yeah. That was BC, huh? And then coming out of COVID, uh, I got asked uh, by several agents if I would want to work on the Holland America Cruise Line as a featured artist. And Jonathan didn't want to go and said, okay, well, I can just do Carol King. And so they did. They hired me. The first time we went, Dave, this is nuts. We get on. We go to get on the ship, uh-huh. and they had lost Bill's gear. Oh. All of Bill's gear my was gone. My guitar and my pedal board. Everything was gone. Gone. Oh no! So we get on the ship, and every time we go into port, they go, "I think we're going to get your guitar here." No, it isn't here yet. Uh, <gasps> we're going to go to the next port. So this man named Louis Shelton was was on the ship, mm-hmm. and he let Bill use his guitar. Yeah, Louis yeah. Shelton was a member of the Wrecking Crew. Oh, famous, famous yeah. guitar player. Absolutely. Last train to Clarksville. That, yeah. that was Louis. And yeah. wow. uh, one of my favorite guitar parts, uh, Diamond Girl by Seals and Crofts. Ding, that was Louis. Ding, ding. Yeah. Ding. So he, yeah. He, we had yeah. a lot of uh, mutual friends because yeah. wow. he's, he's uh, spent time in, in Nashville. So fast oh, forward. So fast forward. Same agent just called me <laughs> again and said, you want to come and do the Carol King show again? And so we went on. We and the trip was to Hawaii. Oh. So we went for three weeks to Hawaii. And oh, darn the luck. We were on there playing our Carol King show, and it was really a lot of fun. And, wow. and what's great about being on a cruise is everything is so run like clockwork. Oh, the production team was wonderful, and, and we recognized a few of those guys from prior engagements. And it was a lot of fun. And it was really crazy because I would say... Anybody ever been to Nashville? And people would come up and say, oh, I've been to Nashville. My granddaughter lives in Nashville. My granddaughter's a songwriter. You know, that kind of thing. It was cool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So once again, you know, music takes you to a lot of places, and that's always great. I have a Carol King story, right? right? Oh, cool. Okay, so go, go. I live in Cincinnati, and I was a member of NSAI there, and we used to put on this uh, show every, about three, four years, a uh, songwriter festival. And it was called Taste of Batavia. So the restaurants would come out. And then we'd uh, bring all these big songwriters. And we wow. had like Wynn, Barbel, and uh, I'm surprised you weren't there, Chris. Uh, uh, Will Nance. A, a oh, lot yeah. of a lot of big time. Jeffrey Steele would come and play. And, yeah, cool. And, and, and we'd always set up this tent. And we tried to set it up to be like a bluebird. Uh, we had a, uh, it was in a round. Mm-hmm. And uh, my friend Greg, he bought this old lamp with a big shade on it. And anytime. A hit writer would come to town. We'd have them sign the lamp. Oh my gosh! Right, that's we, cool. He still has this lamp, and there's probably a hundred signatures on there. Um, so we're playing on a Saturday in in the round. Yeah. And walking down the midway is Carol King. Oh come on! I swear to God, she stops. We're between songs, and she looks and she goes, "Oh, that's just like the bluebird." And I'm like, "You're Carol King." <laughs> And she goes, yeah, I'm campaigning for Sherrod Brown, you know. I was like, come on into the tent. And so she came in, and we begged her to play a song. She goes, no, 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 I'm not here to play a song. Would you sign our lamp? Ah, <laughs> yeah. that's the best. So she signed the lamp. So anyway. That's a cool idea, sign the lamp. It's an honor. <laughs> that's really neat. It's so great when you meet an icon or somebody that you really look up oh, to. One of the best all-time songwriters. Would you have to agree? I mean, seriously, oh, the songs she's uh-huh. what songs do you do when you, when you do her? Well, we... You know, it's really interesting because we do a lot of tapestry songs, oh, of course. course. Everybody loves the tapestry album. Right. So My we wife's do, all-time favorite album. Oh, yeah. yeah. So many people love that album yeah. so much. Uh, 
it's too late, feel it's the earth late. move. Uh, we do a duet of Up on the Roof. Uh, we do You've Got a Friend, of course. And then and then uh, Bill wrote me a medley of some of her old, her first old hits. Yeah. And so I do that. Like and, Locomotion and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Do, yeah. The, do those and, you know, talk a little bit about when they were. By the way, hits. there are videos if you go to uh, YouTube with, with you and. Uh, Jonathan. With Jonathan. Yeah. With the whole symphony and everything. Yeah. yeah. And that's at the you've got a friend music.com if anybody wants to watch us do that or. Absolutely. Anybody wants to have me come and be Carol King, I'll do that too. <laughs> yeah. Please do. <laughs> we can contact you where? Kirstie.com or uh, you can email me at. Kirsty, no, I, sh- I guess I should say info at songwritergirl.com. That's Songwriter. the best way to get me. Yeah. Well, let's segue right into Songwriter Girl. Well, let's do it. Yeah. Tell us about that. That's pretty cool. Well, I used to go and speak at these different workshops, Dave, mm-hmm. talent workshops. Yeah. Bill and I had produced a, a pop act called Eye Candy years ago. I can. And we had a really good time doing that. And, and the lady Almost that... Almost put it over the top. Yeah. It was a really... showcased in New York. And, oh. Yeah. It was a really great act. Wow. So, Anyway, it didn't work out, but it anyhow, anyhow uh, the lady that was one of the people that introduced us to these kids, uh, it was an all-girl group, she had these workshops, and so I would go speak at these workshops, and, and you know, there were always girls and guys, and every time the guys got in the room, girls acted all different and everything, you know, they were scared <laughs> to do things and ask things and whatever, and I thought, you know, I've had success in the music industry, I want to help girls and women learn about what I learned and I want them to be empowered. So I decided I to have my own event. And I my first it. song or girl camp was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at, uh, what is, what was the name of that college? Uh, I can't even think of it right now. Uh, it was a guy's name. Anyway, George Mason university or some <laughs> yeah. name like that. It really okay. was. Okay. So it was some little small college in PA. And so I had my first camp there and, then I started having them twice a year. I'd hold them at Mon- Montgomery Bell. I'd hold them at Scarrett Bennett. And I, I also it, took it on the road. We went over to Europe and did them in Florida, California, Alaska, a lot of places. But always had them in Nashville, too. And so the whole idea of the camp was to give girls uh, the, the voice for themselves, help them find their voice, and to empower them you know, to be creative. And I used to say, I don't care if you want to be a chef. I'm just trying to kick you in the creative butt. There you go. So that you find your gifts and figure out who you are, what you want to say. And not everybody's going to be a star. And that is so important. And I preach that all the time in this podcast. You know, yeah. find your own voice. Find oh, your yeah. own thing. Yeah. Be yeah. you. Because yeah. there's no, we don't, we've got a Taylor Swift. We've got to be honest. There's only one you. There's, there's only, only one you. you. And I remember as a girl growing up, you know, I would try to emulate different singers. And, that, you know, you that emulate? that's that's what you do, you yeah. know. But then as you... Go into your Airbrush own Airbrush in front of the mirror, kind of. Thing. Yeah. Well, my, and who were you singing? Who were you doing? I I always loved Barbara Streisand. Oh, I always yeah, loved her voice, yeah. you know, because I was a musical theater kid, so that okay. really interested me. And I liked right. Ella Fitzgerald. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Sarah Vaughn, and oh, yeah. I liked the Jazzers. I liked all those people. And mm-hmm. really, this is crazy. You know, Tapestry was one of the first records I really got into as a teen because. She played piano, and I played piano uh-huh. my whole life. I liked all the piano playing people and mm-hmm. never really could figure out the songwriting thing. That was a little bit of a mystery to me, you know, until you start to explore on your own, and that's how you figure start figuring it out. When did that start for you, the songwriting passion? What did you say? Uh, the songwriting passion. When did you realize that this is what you wanted to do? I was probably not until I was 20, 21, something what? like that. It was when I got a little bit older, you know, mm-hmm. because I, like I said, I was immersed in musical theater. That was my life yeah. growing up. And then I went to college. I was a piano major. I was a really? voice major to start with, but had some vocal issues. And so I switched majors to piano because I had a big background in piano Wow! and um, graduated with a bachelor uh, bachelor of Music, Music Ed. Mm-hmm. And I always thought that I would, you know, maybe want to teach school. And then when I got to about my second and a half year of school, I thought, I don't want to teach school. <laughs> so I'll just finish my degree anyway. I think it would be a smart thing to do. But, you know, in the end, you know, as we all go along and the more knowledge we gain, we all become teachers in some way, I, shape, or form. I agree. Whether you think you are or not, you are, you know. And don't you learn just as much when you're teaching? Yes. Yeah. I learned yeah. from everybody I, I, yeah. I work with. Dot. And we are so lucky, aren't we, Dave, we are. to be in a, a city 
where that goes on. You mm-hmm. know, when you when you leave the bubble of Nashville, you know, you go out there and and it, it's like people are mystified. You know, How we, does it all work? Exactly. And it isn't really just about songwriting. It's about being creative. There, mm-hmm. I have to say this kid's name because he's, I think he's brilliant, mm-hmm. but his name is Justin Freck and you're going to hear about him someday. Justin but at Freck. any rate, he, you should interview this kid because he's, I'd love to. he's super creative and uh, I get together with him. I met him when I was an adjunct professor at Vol State and he was in my classes there. Wow. I taught songwriting, publishing, performance coaching for them for a while and I really enjoyed it. And he was one of those kids that was a real sponge and he just has a lot of talent and we were talking one day and he said, he said, you know, when you're creative, you just want to be creative. Like you want to be creative with everything. And that's the spinning plate f- phenom for me. It's like, wow. I know it seems cuckoo, yeah. Yeah. but it's like, yeah, that looks yeah, I fun. That. I, I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's wobbling. I got to go work on that a little bit, you know. I'm the same and I know, I, yeah. yeah I and know. I know people think that's cuckoo, but I would not be happy if yeah. I couldn't explore just the thought of it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, hundred percent. You're only supposed to juggle, so I don't want to see you <laughs> yeah. tap dancing. You yeah. know that kind of thing. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you got a passion for it, go for it. You know it. So let's spark our creativity a let's little. Let's do it. Tell us about uh, uh, sparking your creativity. Well, here's how. Because there are days when you go, oh yeah, I do this. I really no. No, you're not. I really don't have too many down days, do I, Bill? No. No, no do you, you're, do you, you're a the, you're a very positive. You're so creatively drained. Your, your glasses. No, it's always it's half, half full. full and it's. There are days. Another over. truth of songwriters. We all have them. You go. Oh gosh. Mm, I, I to love go, this. Gotta write a song today. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I always say, God, please, like, open my heart. This is going to be the best day, whatever. And I get there, and it'll always be the day that I'm like, yes. With the song. You know what I mean? I it's do know like you when mean. you put that on yourself and then you get there and it's fabulous. If you look at it as being stressed, it's going to stress you out and you are going to be blocked. You but know if it. If you look at it like, and you know my friend Kim McLean, you know Kim? Yeah. I love Kim. It, 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 on this podcast, she said, I used to pray for the gift of songwriting. Oh, yeah. You know, and um, and I do every day. Yeah. You know, yeah. Open up, be open to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bill D always says a prayer before we write, and I, th- I really think it helps because. You know, it's give us the crazy creativity kind of thing because yeah. it it is crazy. We don't always know how to harness it. No, yeah. no. Yeah. It kind of like chokes me up to think about the thought of, you know, all the gifts and talent that everybody has and how being here in Nashville and having the opportunity to meet other people who are encouraging because some people mm. never have encouragement. It's the saddest so thing in the true. world, it, right? You're right, though, yeah. But spark your creativity. So here I came, you know... Um, I was working with somebody who was going to help me get some more speaking gigs and then COVID, always with the COVID, right? The darn COVID. COVID. So COVID hits and we're like, what are we going to do? Well, I had taken a course one time that said, you know, there are all these different stages you can speak on and one is a podcast. And so I started my podcast right there in the midst of COVID and I always wanted to write an online course. Well, the friend of mine that was helping me with speaking, he was really knowledgeable and had been a big part of um, putting uh, courses into platforms. So he knew how to put them in there, you know, get them set and ready to sell and all that stuff. So that's exactly what he helped me do. And so I wrote the course. We shot all the videos at our house, huh, Bill? Wow. All the, we, you know, they yeah. the, the course is not a video course. It's just me saying intros or saying, this is what this module's about. And then it's really, you know, you doing the work. I was really inspired by the book, The Artist's Way by book. Julia Cameron. It's the best. It's a great book. And I read that book, knew about that book from a master acting coach, and it changed my artistic life, I have to say. That book really did. Mm-hmm. And so, I was inspired from that book to write this course, and I encourage anybody to get the course. It's not an expensive course. You can go to Kirstie.com and find a way to buy it there. Mm. And it and the course is, is just all about tapping into yourself, discovering more about yourself, your potential, being real with yourself. My big thing with Songwriter Girl was always lose the fear. You know, I'm personality wise, I'm not a fearful person. I mean, I don't want to jump out of an airplane with a parachute or anything, (laughs) but, but I'm not fearful, you know, and, 
and, and, you know, and I've been in an environment for the last 20 some years to be encouraged. To just, what are you thinking? What do you, what do you, no, this will be stupid. No, say it. What do you mean? <laughs> right? Exactly right. And that is like a big lose. The fear thing. Okay. You're giving me permission, shutting my eyes. Here I go. Right. Oh, that wasn't so stupid after all. Well, you and know? it might spark something. Uh, exactly. Else in the room, you know. Exactly. Yeah, you can't be afraid to express. No, yeah. and the other thing too that the question. But you, on the other hand, you can't hold dear to it either. As, as Kevin Griffin has been on the show said, uh, uh, the, the ego is not your amigo. You right. Know? Right. So you have to learn to let it go too. Yeah. If you're going to yeah. co-write, you yeah, know, you're right. you're, you have to do that. Part. Right. Yeah. You're but right. anyway, so no. so that's what the course is basically about, and and wow, and uh, you know, I'll probably write another one someday, <laughs> but. It was a lot of work, and and it was you know really me kind of pouring my heart on in a sense of you oh, know what oh, to yeah. how how do I want to share what I have learned about myself with other people, and I've been working on a book for a few years called my my book. phrase is whatever yeah. you do stay inspired, and that's the name of the book. Whatever and, you do, stay inspired. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. and that came from Song of a Girl. It's like you know whatever you do. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're, it came out of that, you know, I don't care if you want to be a chef. I don't care if you want to do this. I don't care if you want to, whatever, be a dog groomer, stay inspired. Just be inspired in your life. I think I know the answer to this, but what inspires Kirsty Nana? Everything. A lot of things inspire me, you know, uh, other people, songs, stories, people have stories of people that survive. I'm getting like choked up. I yeah, love when survive. I get choked up, by the way, I mm. love it because mm. it, it's exci- it excites me to know all the wonderful things that are in life that can inspire you and and you have to just be open to whatever that is going to be that day and if you know as a songwriter if you're having a bad week or you feel blocked or something just just change it up you know Absolutely. go do go do the thing that the artist way said go have an artist date do something f- to fill your own well and then you'll have something to draw on you know, know about that Somebody once talked, and I don't remember who it was, talked about when you're not writing, you're in an input mode. Input mode. It's yeah. all of these things. Yeah. Are, and, and the thing, too, that's so hard in Nashville, because everybody watches everybody else have success and everything, and you just have to be happy for other people's success. You really do. Because you don't have to be, but you should be. You should be. I think it's healthy to, you know, I think it's, it, it's good to put out the vibes to other people Mm-hmm. that you feel joy for them because you want them to feel that way for you. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and also, you know, just the whole thing of uh, there's all different kind of levels of success in the music business. There's all kinds of ways for your music to be out there. It doesn't all have to be the, in the top five you know, on billboard, you know, it's about how you define success. Right? Yeah. And it's so true. It's, yeah, it really it's so true. true. Yeah, it's so it true. Really is. And talking about being happy for other, it's <clears throat> there's such a temptation. You're looking at the socials and oh, so and so did oh, this. Oh, it's, it's so hard. Playing yeah. the bluebird, and you compare yourself, and you go, oh, you know, I'm no good. Baloney, baloney. It's you can't. It, don't compare yourself again. Right. You go back to you. Be true to you. Right. You define your own success. Well, and you? I and, and you know you can call it meditation, prayer, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, you know being able to really focus on the positive of. You know, what's something that you really want to see yourself doing and mm-hmm. and, and get quiet with yourself? Because a lot of us don't know how to be quiet and it's not always quiet where we are. <laughs> exactly. And so making the time to be quiet and, and really be in quiet thought, you know, I mean, like in prayer, you know, if you're really praying, you know, you're conscious of what you're praying and saying in that prayer. It's it, it, you're you're in this mode, yeah, you know. And um, I'm really glad that you you do this podcast uh, in regards to songwriting because there are so many people out there that are trying to understand how in the world does this thing work. Mm-hmm. And on some days, the ones that are all of us that are here, we don't know how it works, right, Dave? <laughs> but at any rate, it it gives people encouragement. And I really believe in the world that is what lacks so much. I think that's why there's crime. I think it's why people are unhappy. I think that's why they're depressed. There's all kinds of complex reasons why people are sad. Yeah. I know that's, we're getting too heavy here. No, but I love it. It's 100%. I agree. Wow. Very interesting. 
You know, you're, you're so cool to talk to. And there's, <laughs> I feel like we do another three, four hours, you know. Let's come back. But we're you, I, you're always welcome. Always welcome. <laughs> I've really enjoyed getting to meet you. But I want you to get at least one more song in okay. before we go. You want us to play a fast one or what do you want to hear? What do you feel like? Let's do Heartbreak Moon. Okay, let's Heartbreak just, Moon. Because we, we both wrote that. We yeah. wrote this back together. Back when I cool. yeah. It's great. Th- this was one of our oldies but goodies when we wrote as a team. And, and oh. Dave, I just want to thank you so much for having me and My for pleasure. doing this podcast. And and uh, um, it's really great. So this this is called Heartbreak Moon. As I said, Bill and I were jazzers. Yeah. And uh, we met in, in college and... We had a jazz duo for a long time. And you know, so my, my first job in radio, paid radio, radio job, was jazz. Doing really? Jazz. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. WKSU in Kent. Oh, okay. Oh, I was okay. affiliate at the Hey, time. do you remember that group in Kent called the Numbers Band? Oh, my gosh. Do we, I remember? I, I got think, one of their albums. I think yeah. I saw you there at the club that night. I mean, we, <laughs> we used to go and hear them. I mean, I did, too. Were they not I want to say it was like every Thursday night, I want to say. It was, oh. Were they not interesting? Incredible. Whatever happened to those people? They were like telepathic, you they know? They were. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you don't know about the Numbers so Band, long, yeah. read about them. They, I'm yeah. sure you can find some of the music. They were absolutely oh. incredible. They were so they were so unique. They were like a record company's dream. You know, they oh, were really out there. The brass section, the whole thing. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Here we are, squirrel. <laughs> yeah, right, about, right. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about jazz music and this great song that you're going to do for us. Thank you, Dave. Heartbreak moon, coming back too soon. Laugh anymore And I will cry hush a baby hush a Lonesome blue Stuck with big old you Heartbreak moon It's me and you tonight Where is the one man that I can hold on to? And if he finds me, will he always be true? Not much new since your last Debut. I'm still hanging, my tears to dry all alone under your starry sky. Heartbreak moon, it's me and you tonight. <laughs> Where is the one man that I can hold on to? And if he finds me, will he always be true? Give me a clue. Not much new Since your last debut I'm still hanging my tears to dry All alone under your starry sky Heartbreak moon It's me and you Tonight on Break moon, it's me and you tonight. Wow. <laughs> Christy 
Yeah, even scatting for us. Uh, <laughs> well, who that's says, an art right Who here. says you can't scat in Nashville? <laughs> oh, you can, absolutely. <laughs> There's a lot of moon and June rhymes in there. Moon there we, are. we probably wouldn't do that many. I wouldn't do that it now, but that's written, A lot of ooh rhymes More anyway. recently. But, and Bill, thanks for making my guitar sound. It's mm-hmm. never, I was going to change the strings on those. I was trying to make me change four, as a matter of fact. Um, but I don't think I will. Because it's, it's a lovely instrument. It yes. really sounds lovely. Yeah. It's now uh, past the tree phase. It's, uh, I think they say 20 years, and then it's no longer a tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, funny. I haven't heard, heard that. that. That's yeah, good. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. I've totally enjoyed uh, talking with you. I so both. enjoyed it. Yeah. Great questions, great interview, and thanks oh, for doing this show. Listen to the, the Kirsty podcast. Kirsty Cast. Kirsty Cast. And, Kir- and find me at Kirsty.com, and it's on YouTube. It's on streaming. Yes. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Songwriter Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also, listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.